Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial when you visit audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Just visit audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge today. My name is Fred Kep. I'm the host of the Teacher Recharge Podcast. And this week, I'd like you to email me, teacherrechargepodcast at gmail.com, with your school's mascot. I'd love to hear what's out there. I'd love to hear what you're repping, and I'd love to pick a winner. Go ahead, email that to teacherrechargepodcast at gmail.com. Let's get into the show. Hello, party people. Welcome back to another edition of the Teacher Recharge Podcast, episode two on season two. If you haven't listened to episode one with CJ Reynolds, go ahead, press the pause button, head back, listen to that. We will be here when you get back, I promise. And once you're done listening to this awesomeness, go ahead, leave a rating and a review on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you listen to a podcast. It helps people find us. It also helps us just in general. Today's guest is not going to disappoint. Her name is Lainey Matula. And let me tell you a little bit about her though. She is born and raised in Austin, Texas. She's a fourth grade teacher and she loves every minute of it. Her students are her world. She works with a very diverse population where most students come from low income families, title one schools, and she has a few struggles that have come her way. The way I found her is I read an article she wrote on weareteachers.com called This Year a Parent Tried to Get Me Fired. And it is all about how a parent tried to get her fired for being a lesbian. And we'll talk a little bit about that during the episode. Just a lot of good stuff, good quality content in this particular episode. You're going to absolutely Love this, and it will propel you to make the biggest impact possible this week. So without further ado, enjoy the episode with Lainey Matula. Hello, Teacher Recharge listeners. Welcome back to another edition of the Teacher Recharge Podcast. Today, we have another guest, another amazing guest. You betcha. It's none other than Lainey Matula. How the heck are you doing today? I am superb. Awesome. Well, where are you coming to us from? I actually live in Hutto, Texas, which is right outside of Austin. Hutto, the Hutto Hippos. That is correct. Hippo Nation. Oh my gosh. Wow. I've never, well, that's a lie. I've met tons of people from Hutto. My family is actually, they all live in Austin. Yeah. Legendary mascot, the Hutto Hippos. Well, good to have you on the show. Now, just real quick, I've, I've already given you a little bit of an introduction, but I kind of want to hear it in your own words. Kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. What makes you you? Well, I am born and raised here in Austin, so I'm kind of a unicorn in this area. I actually grew up in Liberty Hill, which is a tiny, t- well, it used to be a tiny town, but it is not anymore. And now I'm in Hutto, and we used to be rival schools. So Ooh. it's kind of hard for me to say I'm a hippo all the way when I oh. grew up as a panther. I'll eventually get there. But yes, I just started, I I will be starting teaching this year in Hutto. So I have to officially be a hippo and probably about two more weeks. So you said uh, you're a unicorn, but that's not to be confused. Man, in Texas, they have some crazy mascots. That's not to be confused with the New Braunfels unicorns. Oh, very true. Which is actually a thing. Google it. I promise it's a thing. Wow. Texas is wild. We don't have anything like that here in here in Kansas. Sweet. Well, I think it sounds like it's a perfect time for the minute intro. Now, this is one thing we've added. If this is your first time listening in season two, this is something we've added. It's a minute intro. It's a kind of like a hot seat, asking tons of questions. They could range from something deep to something super chill, like what's your favorite food? Who knows? But we're just going to get to it. Are you ready? I am. You know, I like to think that when I do this, we have, you know how like on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire when he was about to ask the <laughs> questions, like all the lights just go in. That's what I feel like this should be like. All right. So our minute intro with Lainey Matula. Let's get into it. 
If you could choose to do anything for a day, what would it be? Uh, go to the beat. Ooh, I like that. Who is your favorite game or sport to watch and play? What I is love, your favorite game? Sorry. Uh, what is my, I love watching gymnastics. Would you rather ride a bike, ride a horse, or drive a car? Ride a bike. Okay, this is a good one. What would you sing at a karaoke night? Hakuna Matata. All right, let's listen. Boom. Let's explain that. So why Akuna Matata? I am an absolutely awful singer. I love to sing, but I am awful at it. And if I sing Hakuna Matata, I know that everybody would sing along with me and it wouldn't matter what I would sound like. That is so true. Speaking of Hakuna Matata, you know the next question that's coming up. I have, have you- not. <laughs> oh my gosh. So at the time of this recording, like last week... <laughs> the Lion King came out, the new Lion King, the one with Beyonce herself, the Queen Bee. And I'm telling you right now, if you haven't seen it, it's not bad. I would say the animation made me think all of those. You know how like when you watch a, a nature documentary and you're like, you know, I wonder how they got that camera angle. I feel like everything I've ever watched was just animated. That's how they get the camera angle because that is crazy that people can do that with animation. I would highly recommend it. And then Hakuna Matata. Ain't no worries. Ain't no worries. I love it. What a perfect minute intro. Sweet. Well, I think we're about ready to get started with the actual interview portion of it. We usually start with a question That is just, what are you doing to make sure that you hit Monday ready to make the biggest impact possible? One of the first things I do, not just on Monday, but every day is I start my day off with music. I am very much a believer in how music can make, it can be therapeutic. And Mm -hmm. I listen to music to get me going, depending on my mood, I can kind of change it up. But Monday mornings, I normally start off with something a little bit more upbeat and gets me going. I also check my calendar to make sure I know exactly what's happening through the week, especially that day. And one of the other, this is going to sound silly, but I do this. Don't know if you've ever watched Grey's Anatomy, but there's an episode where she's about to go into surgery and she stands there in the Wonder Woman pose. Oh, and, yeah. You know, you just kind of have to get your bearings together and realize you can do this. Mm -hmm. And on Monday mornings, that's something I do in the middle of my classroom before the kids come in to try to get everything together and know I can do this. You know, that, that is actually a power pose and it is something that literally has psychological benefits and it it Mm -hmm. does. It sounds really silly, but it, it it works. It works. (laughs) You got to believe in that kind of stuff. It's really cool. Next question. What makes you, unique what makes you you i actually have a really hard time coming up with an answer on this just because trying to think about something unique about yourself is difficult so i actually asked a few friends about this Mm -hmm. and those things that stuck out the most was they said i'm very assertive yeah i'm very confident (laughs) in what i say and do and i'm not scared to stick up for what i believe in and what's right i love hard and i fight for what's right regardless of what other people believe, yeah. even administration, I will fight for my students and I will fight for whatever I know is best for them. So I think just really being, and I had a coworker this year tell me that she, her goal this year was to be more assertive. And I was new to the school and she said, you're exactly who I want to be. Like, I wanted to be like you. And because of you now, I see that I can be assertive. And she started being more assertive and it was great. Wow. What what do you think that stems from? Like how, why do you think you are, are capable of, of being like that? Cause that's not, that's not a normal, I mean, like, I feel like that's not a, something that everybody's blessed with, you know, the ability to, to, to go up and actually say stuff. What gives you the confidence to do that kind of stuff? I honestly believe it stemmed from my dad. He was very assertive mm-hmm. and did everybody like him? Absolutely not. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Does everybody like me? Probably not. I know that they don't. But Mm -hmm. as long as I know what I'm doing is right, it it really, it started with my dad. I know that. Mm -hmm. You know what I think also might be something is obviously the culture you grew up around and and the people you surround yourself contributes to that. But I also think it's a, it's a different metric of, of how you kind of measure yourself as well. So like, for example, a lot of people aren't assertive because they feel like if they say, oh, well, Hey, even though that's against what I believe in and stuff, I feel like I can't be assertive to someone who might be in an administrative position. Their metric is, oh, well, I, I have to have this job. Where is it 
an educator if you if you shift that idea to you know I care about my students first and foremost right then that metric is shifted so it's like oh well now the main focus has to be my students and if if, if it's not working for my students then what am I why am I doing this in the first place if you really do seem to to fight a lot for your students well with that said we are almost toward the break but I do have one question before we hit that break and that is because, you know, everybody that comes on my show seems perfect, in my opinion. But ain't nobody that come on my show perfect because we are all human. So what is something that you have failed hard at? And what did you do about that? Ironically, after saying I've been assertive as my unique quality, I have a really hard time telling people no. Mm-hmm. I struggled with that for almost my whole life. Probably four or five years ago is when I realized that I have to say no sometimes because I'd normally give the shirt off my back to anybody. I would help in any way possible and I would do everything that I possibly could to help anybody out. And so I finally said, I can't stay here till six or seven at night. I can't get here at five o'clock in the morning. And I finally put my foot down and am able to say no when I know I need to. Mm -hmm. So why do you think people are, are so because I feel like that's a fairly common trait, especially among like educators. Why do you think people are so bad at saying no? And then how how did you kind of take that step to where that wasn't a th- as much of a thing anymore to where you actually could possibly say something? I think we don't want to hurt people's feelings. I think that's a big thing. Or we don't want to let people down or... I mean, it could be anything, but I know those are the two main things that kind of strike me as why I, I don't want to do it. Right. I think the big thing is my, my wife is a therapist mm-hmm. and she kept seeing me get hurt by people because I would just give and give and give. And she told me, she's like, you have to stop. You right. have to stop and tell these people no. And it could have been anything of meeting up with them to give them something or doing their work for them or helping them pack or mm-hmm. it, it could be just about anything. But she was like, you have to be able to tell somebody no. Right. And I, I still struggle. Like two weeks ago, I was struggling with telling a, a family member that I couldn't help them out watching their kid. Mm-hmm. And she was like, it's okay. It's okay. So. Yeah, I think. That is a leadership quality because if you if you wanted to go out and make everybody disappointed, what kind of person would you be? But I also think that I mean, like you mentioned, I think there's a really big component of of you know self care there as well. Like, Absolutely. of course, I want to help as many people as possible. But I think that your other actions, and that's the other thing I want the listeners to kind of hear there is. Is like your other actions, if you're trying to do the right thing in every situation, they'll speak for themselves. Like you, you won't have to say, oh, like, I'm sorry that I can't make it or I, sorry, I can't do this. Everybody will just be like, okay, she can't do it. Like, that makes sense. Like, she's a really giving, busy person. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know. No, that's some great stuff and great stuff before the break. So we are going to go ahead, take a real quick break and we'll be right back. For you, the listeners of the Teacher Recharge podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Whenever I have a guest on the show, I ask them for a recommendation. So, Lainey, what would be your recommendation? I actually just started Audible this last month, and one of my favorites is one of their original audibles. I'm a huge baseball fan and Babe Ruth. And so it is called Screwball. Screwball. Yes. I actually just started reading stuff on Audible as well. And I'm telling you, that is such a good thing because when I read, I fall asleep a lot. Don't have to do that. Yeah. (laughs) Which is awesome. Screwball. If you would like a free copy of that book, check it on out or any of the other 180,000 titles that they have to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. All you got to do is go to audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge today. We are back on the interview with Lainey Matula. And, yo, it's my favorite time of the year. 
the week, the month, the the show, the everything else that I could possibly think of to say right now. It's story time. If this is the first time you've listened to this show, well, then you're in for a treat. That's all I have to say because here's the deal. This is the part of the show where I shut up and let the guests talk and straight up, it could be, this story could be anything. It could be sad. It could be happy. It could be comedic. It could be downright flipping depressing. That's not up for me to decide. That's totally up to Lainey. But anyways, it's not coming from me. It's coming from Lainey. So Lainey, take it away. Story time. Okay, so I told you earlier, I'm a huge music fan. Um, I love listening to EDM music, such as Rez, Elenium, Set the Sky, all different artists. And every day, like I said, I start in the morning and I end my day with it. Well, I am getting ready to leave for the end of the day. And one of my coworkers, I always go tell her bye before I leave. And I go up into her room and she is like, looks like she's in panic mode. And she's like freaking out and going desk to desk and looking around. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? She's like, I'm going to have to talk to the counselors, the student. I just, I don't, I don't know what's wrong. This student drew this and she showed me this drawing and I just giggled. And she was like, why are you laughing? It has crosses over the, uh, the X's over the eyes. And, and it says he's all alone. This is my student's so scared and I just don't know what to do. And I looked at her and I said, um, that's not, X, it is X's over the eyes, but that's marshmallow. And she was oh. like, marshmallow. <laughs> and I said, yes, the DJ, that's yeah. marshmallow and his hu- big song alone. And so I had to explain to her exactly who marshmallow was. And I had to pull up the video and I had to show her the video of alone by marshmallow so that she wouldn't go to the counselor <laughs> and talk to the parents thinking something was really upsetting with the student. Oh my gosh, what an awesome story, <laughs> Marshmallow. So are you a big Marshmallow fan though? I actually, Marshmallow was one of my first EDMs that I started playing in the classroom about four or five years ago. Oh, okay. And the students fell in love. And so every year I play it. Now that he's on the radio, a lot mm-hmm. of students already know who he is, yeah. but it's it's so funny because the kids will make little masks and put them on. And that was my next them. question. Where's yes. your marshmallow mask? Do you got one? Do you have one? <laughs> you got one? The students have made me one, but I personally have not made one just yet. That is flipping awesome. That is so cool. Well, do you? Would you ever want to be a DJ? M- me personally, no. I I don't think I would. But it'd be cool. It'd be like I don't know. That'd be so cool. No, that is that's such a good story though. How? Uh, if you don't mind me asking, how old was the teacher who was like, "Oh no, about this." <laughs> She's 36. Oh, wow. Wow. I feel like, I feel like she should she know. Only listen, she only listens to country music. Though. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Get out of here, Texas. Come on. No, I'm just kidding. That I would know. happen in Kansas too. <laughs> no, that is funny though. Wow. That's so funny. Super, super fun. Well, before we get to, to anything you want to plug, I do want to bring up something because where I learned about you was I was going through one of the teacher forums, I guess, on Facebook, and I came across an article that said, this year, a parent tried to get me fired. And what's interesting about this particular title is the first thing I thought was, oh, you know, I coach soccer and a lot of a lot of things coaches I don't know. There's been a lot of stuff in the news and stuff. Okay. Where, like people are like, "Oh, this coach said this." This guy. So I figured, "Oh, it's probably something like that." I would love to to read it. So I started reading it, and I was like, "Oh, it's a little bit different." I'm definitely gonna post a, a link to it at the end for sure because I think it is extremely valuable valuable article here. But I just kind of wanted to get your perspective on it. What what made you want to write something like that? Because I talk about assertiveness. I feel like if I if I go out and get that real with, you know, people, I'm, I've been getting a lot better about, about being very real with people, but I feel like there's always that thought in my mind, like, oh, if people overreact, like I might lose my job or something like that. How'd you get over that and actually put this out and just be like, you know what? No, this needs to get out there. I guess the first thing that people need to know is what the article was mainly about. Oh yeah, that would be a good thing and if you could just kind of tell that a little bit, yeah. So the big, the reason a parent tried to fire me is because I'm a lesbian. Mm-hmm. And I think the big thing is that I believe that I, I'm going to be me no matter what. I, I literally 
would hide in a closet crying because of who I was. And mm-hmm. I finally decided that I wasn't going to do that anymore. I was going to be me no matter what. And so I, I think it's very important and valuable for students to know that it's okay that you may be a little different, whether you're black, white, whatever you may be, gay, straight, bi. And so a parent was really upset because I was, I'm a lesbian and she said lesbians should be teachers and they should be around kids. And so that was just really, really hard for me to hear. And it took everything in me to not say anything to this parent. I had to go to my room, turn on the music and get my bearings together when that happened because it was, it was just a very hard day. But like you said, I'm very assertive. And I think that I want people to know that it's okay to be you no mm, matter what. Definitely, um, We're going to fight a hard fight all the time. And um, equality is a huge issue, especially these days in, in today's society. And you wouldn't think it would be an issue, but it absolutely is. And yeah. so I will continue to fight for who I am and for those that may be a little bit, quote unquote, different or, you know. Yeah. yeah and hearing you say that and stuff, I just feel you would think 2019, it's not that big of a deal. But man, it is such a, and it's a, it's a, it's an issue that needs to be highlighted and then highlight it again, and then highlight it again. Because at the end of the day, we got kids that are LGBTQ, and they don't feel like they can just be themselves. Exactly. But I always imagine it like, if I wasn't allowed, like if if I didn't feel like I could love my wife the way I want to love her, like, and tell people about her and stuff, that's, that's just not right. That's just yeah. not right. Then we get into the psychology of it and how much damage that can do to kids. And it has to become an issue that isn't an issue anymore. And I think teachers like you, and we've had a, a couple other teachers on the show as well that are, are I mean, I, I even read in your, your bio that you're starting a GSA at your school. I had another teacher on last season that, that started a GSA at his school. And people that kind of lead the charge with that and give kids permission to have a, a place at the school where they can just be themselves, but then also have that community. And then also see someone who has made it, who is doing something with their life and doing great things. <laughs> There's plenty out there, but to, to actually have a relationship with that person, oh, it's, it's so important, such a big deal. And I really wanted to make sure before we got to the end of this interview that we highlighted that. Cause I, I just, I want people out there to hear that. Like it is an issue. It's not something that, that I'm going to shy away from ever. And I'm glad that there are people like you that are willing to talk about it and, and to help everyone else kind of catch up. You know what I mean? Catch up, get, yeah. get into 2019, quit living in the, <laughs> in the, in the stone age. Anyways. Great. Well, I appreciate you becoming that like open with us about, about that issue and stuff that that's so, so I'm so grateful for that. On a little, little bit lighter note, it, it's about time that we end this shindig. So before we let you go, if people want to get in touch with you, ask you any questions or kind of follow your life and, and your success, how can they do that? You can follow me on Instagram at Matula's underscore minions, or you can email me at laneymarie82 at gmail.com. That's L-A-N-I-E-M-A-R-I-E eight two at gmail.com so wait awesome and we'll get we'll get the conversation started if you have any questions comments anything like that and then finally at the end of the show we always give a challenge for the week ahead for teachers to take in laney what would you say to all the teachers out there that they could take into the week ahead so that they make the biggest impact possible after today's show i'm gonna say speak up for yourself be transparent and authentic and be a little more assertive if you aren't already. I love it. Well, all right, you party people out there, go out, make a big impact. Email me at teacherrechargepodcast at gmail.com. Let me know how it goes. Go be assertive. Go take on the world. You got this. Be you. Lainey. Yes, be you. Thank you, Lainey, so much for coming on the show. We definitely, definitely appreciate it. Thank you.